Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... Tonight, The Category Inventor by Arthur Sellings. But first, hear this. I don't have time to tell you all about the many things that make Pabst Blue Ribbon a better-tasting, more thirst-quenching beer. Besides, you're more interested in how it tastes than how it's made. But one thing you should know. Experience is the most important ingredient in any beer. And Pabst is the product of America's oldest national brewer. Established 1844. Pabst of Milwaukee. Now, X minus one. As Nelson Olmsted stars in The Category Inventor. Frankly, I didn't expect to have the trouble. The morning that it happened was just like any other morning. I came into the locker room and took off my coat, and through the open doors I could hear the welcome sound of the boys warming up. Perhaps I should have realized something was wrong when Kurt Bergson, the orchestra manager, came up to me. Gilbert, how are you this morning? Fine, Mr. Bergson. I'm not late, am I? No, 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 not late. Uh, you must have left the house early this morning. Yes, yes, I did. It was such a nice day, I thought I'd walk. Luckily, I don't play the double bass. <laughs> Bassoon isn't so hard to carry. <laughs> mm, uh, you didn't get your mail this morning? No, no, I didn't. Uh, mail usually comes about 10 o'clock. I... Well, I better get out there and warm up. Gilbert, I... I wish you had gotten your mail this morning. You see, I... I have to let you go. What? But what do you mean? Why? Why? What's the matter? Well, you understand. But... but there's a concert tonight and, and tomorrow night. Well, who can you get to replace me? But where can you get a bassoonist? Where? Oh, no. I'm sorry, Gilbert. It had to happen. Oh, no. Not the bassoon. The timpani I can understand and the piano, but not the bassoon. I'm going out there. Don't, Gilbert. Don't. You'll just be unhappy. Now, let me by, Mr. Bergson. I've got to see it with my own eyes. <laughs> Of course, it was bound to happen. Where my music stand and chair had, had been stood a gleaming coppery robot. His music stand was attached to a bracket that came out from his forehead, and his electronic scanning eyes were blinking and ready. He had seven fingers on each fully articulated hand. His lips were precast and perfect bassoonist embouchure, with flexi plastic butyl skin adjusting to the reed. I could hear the softly whirring motor of his constant pressure breath apparatus. It had come. The robot bassoonist. Now, Gilbert, honey, you mustn't be depressed. It's not your fault. The world doesn't understand creative artists anymore. No, bassoon player isn't creative, Marge. He executes. Well, anyway, he's an artist. That means he's got intelligence and imagination. And that means he's got a head start when it comes to a new job, doesn't it, honey? Sure, a yeah, head start. Marge, I tell you, there isn't any use. I've been checking into the category office every day. All I know is how to play the bassoon. Well, we'll just have to get used to being on reserve. But what will we tell the children, dear? <laughs> And then, of course, one day, the household robot broke down in the middle of breakfast. Gilbert! Gilbert! Well, what is it? What? 
the robot right in the middle of getting breakfast. It exploded. And we're our ring setter. Oh, but the children will be late to school. Call in, Michael. Well, there's not much use in their hurrying if there's no breakfast, is there? Well, I'm trying. You think it's easy making breakfast by hand? No. Oh. No. Don't just stand there. Do something. Oh. The children won't get any breakfast, and they've got enough to put up with. Well, what do you mean by that? What exactly have they got to put up Look, with? Look, I haven't got time to argue with you. Which one of these tubes is the orange juice concentrate? I think that's ketchup. Look, turn it off. Oh, you, you jammed it. Oh, it's been like this ever since you stopped... Ever since I what? Oh, well, keep your hand over the ketchup. It's flooding the kitchen. Ever since what? Ever since they put me on reserve. That's what it is, isn't it? Listen, if you think... Confounded robot, always in the way. I ought to... If you're going to use foul language, you might at least keep your voice down. You know what sharp ears the children have. Oh, so now I'm a corrupter of my own children. Well, let me tell you... That... What's that? The henna mask. I said it to synthesize fresh eggs. It's out of control. Oh, Gilbert, there goes the ketchup no. again. Do something. You are listening to The Category Inventor. Tonight's attraction on X minus one. Finally, I got the ketchup and orange juice faucets turned off and the henna mat pulled out of the socket. I looked down and there was our household robot on the floor. It was all its fault, it and millions of its kind. Suddenly, all the frustration of the last few months focused on the robot and I kicked it. <laughs> well, now I've seen everything. A grown man actually kicking a poor, defenseless robot. <laughs> I was expecting the mechanic from Robot Center when the door buzzed. I opened it. But it wasn't the mechanic. It was my father-in-law. Hello, son. Surprise, surprise. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting you. George is a politician. And they haven't yet found a robot that can take that trade over. Right behind him was the mechanic from Robot Service. However, he wasn't the mechanic, he explained. Actually, you see, I'm a robot therapist. Huh? Specializing in robot psychiatry and robot synaptic stimulation. Well, what do you mean, therapist? I sent for a mechanic. Now, you just leave it to me, sir. Uh, where is the robot? In the closet. I dumped it there after it broke down. Oh, too bad, too bad. It would have been better if you'd left it where it fell. Failure attitudes often give invaluable pointers to the cause of breakdown. In here? Yeah, that's right, in the, in the kitchen closet. How do you like that? They got psychiatrists for robots. Well, certainly, son, that's the way things are now. They're branching out, keeping one step ahead of the robots all the time. Man's got to be adaptable. Now, you take old Tom Angel. Old Tom up and registers himself as the first of a new generation of reading card verse writers. He was first in, so he got charter rights. Now, you got the idea? Once you get in the progressive mood, you're all set. A funny kind of progress, dusting off a defunct custom. Yeah, well, nowadays a man doesn't have to fight for a job. All he has to do is to invent one. That's one of the platforms of our party, the party that stands up for the reservist rights. Why, you know, it was our party who saw to it that every family worker and reservist alike had a robot of his own by inalienable rights. Oh, no, I'm sick and tired of having a robot of my own. I'd be perfectly happy if there weren't any robots at all, especially the ones that sit in their chromium-plated tails in chromium-plated orchestras playing chromium-plated bassoon. What? Well, Gilbert, you, you don't know what you're saying. You're talking like a Luddite. Oh, I am, am I? What's a Luddite? It's history. They were the people who broke up the first power machines 200 years ago. Well, if that's the way you now, Hold it, now, wait a minute, hold it. Well, it... what is it? What's the matter now? Pop, Pop, I've got it. Excuse me, I'm on my way. Uh, Mr. Perry, I, uh, I just gave your robot a tape audio in there, yeah. and the results were sad. Yeah, well, look. Sad. Yeah, look, I'm busy. I'll talk to you later. That huh? robot has developed a severe guilt complex. Guilt complex? That's right. Oh, they're sensitive, you know. Once they get the idea their owners aren't happy, they brood about it. They make mistakes, and that makes them feel more guilty. You just have to keep these robots understanding that you're happy. <laughs> Well, finally, I got away from the robot psychiatrist. The category office was crowded with reservists hanging around with the slender hope of getting in in a hot tip. I went into the first booth and spoke to the robot clerk. Yes, sir, you wish to file a category. I have your name and other information now. Nature of category. Neo-Luddite. Repeat, please. Neo-Luddite. Definition? The lawful opposition to the robot economy. Now, let's see a robot take over that job. Classification of category. Political. 
will take a short time to check. This machine sends a copy to the registry below. They carry a complete file of all categories. Oh, is that it? I'm sorry, sir, but your application has been rejected. What? The category office extends its sincere regrets and trusts this will not deter you from making further application at the category office. Now, you listen here, you, you, you metallic mouthpiece. That application is legitimate. Now, nobody's got any right to reject it. Now, you can't just stand Please, here. Sir, you are overexcited. The supervisor is on his way. Ah, Mr. Perry, you're upset, eh? Well, you understand we dislike having to turn down anyone's application. Now, listen. Now, that category I put forward is perfectly good. I've got a right to be heard. An opposition party is just what's needed. Well, of course it is, Mr. Perry. I was only trying to tell you that you couldn't register that category because it was registered years ago. What? Yes, the humans-only movement is a recognized party, even though it's never managed to win an election or attract many adherents. But the movement does have state backing, funds, officers, the same proportion of salary to officials, members, uh, the same as the two big parties. Better luck next time, Mr. Perry. There is only one thing to do. Start all over again, some of the lines. Study and study until I could do it as well as I could play the bassoon. But what line? And how could I be sure that it wouldn't be taken over by the robots? I was walking along the street, and then suddenly a soundy ad jumped up out of a hydrant at me, and I popped it and listened. Are you on reserve? Are you tired of being unemployed? Don't fret. Contact the C.P. Jones Bureau, Category Inventors, Room 53, Universe Building. <laughs> Just as I got to the Universe Building, the doors swung open and two big bruisers came through carrying a little old man. You let me go, you hear? Let me go! I'll have a writ served on you. A man's got his rights. Now you let me go. Let me go! Oh, are you all right? I'll have a writ served on him. Are you hurt? No. No. Oh. Well, I wonder if you can help me. This is the Universe Building, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yes, it is, uh, would you mind dusting off my jacket? Yeah. Well, I'm looking for somebody here. I wonder if you could help me. Robbers. Throwing a man out after all these years. Ten years I've worked in this building. Oh, oh you work here. Well, then perhaps you could help me find... Yes, me. I had my own office. The C.B. Jones Bureau. You're C.P. Jones, a category inventor? You heard of me? I... I was coming to see if you could fix me up. Oh. Well, it's just as well you didn't. I didn't have a category in stock. As a matter of fact, son, I never did manage to invent a single category, oh. except the one of category inventor. Well, they finally caught up with me, revised my category a week ago, and canceled my license. Say, would you like to have a drink? No, I don't have any money, only reserve script. Well, that's good enough for an emergency. Come on. <laughs> You see, it didn't cost him anything. My fee was only payable out of salary if and when I delivered. Once a year, the accounting office sent over a robot aud auditor to check the books. Oh, I had two or three sets of books, but they finally caught up with me, and now I've got to invent another job. I used to be a trapeze artist in the circus. I was the oldest trapeze man in the game, but I, I got too shaky. Have another drink. Yeah, well, it's my turn to buy. All right, but say... After we finish this round, let's move to a real bar. About the fourth bar, we got to playing a parlor game, uh, inventing make-believe categories, you know. You go from the inane to the obscene and back again. And we got thrown out of one bar, and, and then we started on beer, and, well, that made us sad, and C.P. Jones began to recite poetry. How am I to face the odds of man's bedevilment in God's? I, a stranger and afraid, in a world I never made. Say, did I ever show you a one-handed nip-up from the chandelier? I used to be an acrobat, you know. Allie, oops. I, I woke up with the sun in my eyes, and I saw a figure moving. <sighs> 
Is that you, Marge? If you want breakfast, you'll have to go out. They haven't delivered the new robot yet. Do you want all this trash? What trash? These papers in your pockets and a note. What does it say? Oh, I'm not surprised you can't read this morning. I'm surprised you're breathing this morning. No, no, please, Marge. All right. It says, Umbrological Parallax Tracer. What's that? Mm. Umbrological Parallax Tracer. Umbrological. Um, that's it. What's it? That's it. Give me my pants. I've got something to attend to. Well, I'm glad to see you, Mr. Perry. Trying again, eh? Yes. Category, umbrological parallax tracer. Well, most interesting... What exactly is that? Well, it involves ascertaining the degrees of parallax for the current umbrological investigation. It's not easy to explain in a few words. Oh, of course. I I thought it would probably be too complex for me to grasp. I'll check it through. Frankly, I don't understand half the details of the categories that we... Ah. Well, let's see now. Oh, dear. What's the matter? The West Town office has already admitted an application this morning for an umbrological parallax correlator. Uh Now, you'll have to prove that the two functions are distinct and separate. Umbrological parallax cor... That wouldn't have been a Mr. C.P. Jones, would it? Uh, Why, yes, you know each other. Well, yes, we should have met this morning and filed our categories together. But a parallax tracer is entirely different from a parallax correlator. You see, a parallax can be correlated in a, in a dialectical opposition in a conjunction to and with it being traced. Now, to put it more simply... Oh, well, that's uh, perfectly all right. I'll see that the distinction is made. Well, your charter will be mailed to you within a few days. I suppose you want to share offices with Mr. Jones? Why, uh, yes, sir. Yes, I suppose so. Very well, then. I'll have the offices assigned. Congratulations, Mr. Perry. You're off reserve. Well, how do you like the new office, Gilbert, my boy? Oh, you figure you almost cleared the pitch for me by filing. Well, I didn't have your address, and I didn't know you'd get the same idea. I just remember we laughed a lot over it and <laughs> thought it one of the best phony categories we'd made up. <laughs> of, of the printable ones, yes. I guess. Anyway, I did change the end to give you a loophole. Of course, we're cheating, aren't we? Cheating? Well, I'm not. I've already looked up umbrology for a start. There isn't any such word. Well, if there was, it would be a science of shadows. Now, all we have to do is find the parallaxes. But you're not serious. Serious? Of course I'm serious. The world's so complicated these days, everyone's such a specialist that no one can be sure yet what's fact and what isn't. We're the only umbrologists in the world. Who can question us? Yes, I suppose that's true. Why, the scope's enormous. (laughs) Anyway, we're off reserve. (laughs) We've got a job. And I'm not letting any grass grow under my feet here. Now, don't just stand there. Our robot hasn't arrived yet. Give me a hand with this filing cabinet. We're going to need it. You're right. (laughs) We got our work cut out for us. Let me tell you, the life of an umbrological parallax tracer isn't all beer and skittles. (laughs) Let's get to work. Fred Collins again, and I'll have a word for you about tonight's X-1 in a moment. On your weekends, at home or in your car, or at the beach, or wherever you are, take a radio along and let Monitor take you along to wherever exciting and interesting and entertaining things are happening anywhere in the world, and sometimes under it, like this. This is Bob Haynes speaking to you from the central control room aboard the U.S. Submarine Sea Lion on this UDT exercise called the bottom lockout. We're about ready to dive. That sound you just heard was the decompression. The top bridge hatch is closed. We're all secured now. Dive, dive. There we go. Yes, from a ride in a Navy submarine to anywhere in the world where exciting and interesting and entertaining things are happening, Monitor takes you there making your weekends brighter with celebrities, music, news, and sports. This is Frank Blair inviting you to join us on Monitor on most of these NBC stations. You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Daniel F. Galloway's unusual story titled If Money. Read it in Galaxy Magazine on your newsstand today. 
Tonight, X-1 has brought you The Category Inventor, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Arthur Sellings and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in our cast were Nelson Almstead as Gilbert, Hetty Galen as Marge, Wendell Holmes as George, Joseph Bell as the serviceman, Alan Bergman as the supervisor, Bert Cowlin as Kurt, and Edwin Cooper as Mr. Jones. This is Fred Collins speaking. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs>